So here's the story. So a little while ago I started on a spin indexer project and I've built half of the spin indexer. There's a video I've uh, put out for that. But in order to machine the spindle, I needed to build a steady rest for the lathe. So the spin indexer project went on hold and I started building a lathe steady. I got most of the lathe steady done and I was milling out the v-groove uh, that goes onto the lathe bed for the base and I was having some issues with the mill here it got to the point where I was winding the y-axis handle and uh, nothing was moving anymore so I had to strip down the table off the mill as you can see take all the DROs off so there's a little bit of a job there and take it all apart and th uh, this is what I found here I don't know about you, but I'm sure these are not supposed to be pressed fit like that. So I'm going to have to make up uh, another nut. I don't know if you can buy these or not. If you can, you're probably not going to find them in New Zealand. They'll probably have to come from China maybe. And, you know, who knows? That could be anywhere from two weeks to three months away. So I'm going to have to make a nut up um, to repair the y-axis on this uh, mill table. Now there's a couple of problems. One is I don't have any material big enough, any brass big enough for this. So I'm going to have to cast some brass up, uh, which I don't think will be a, much of an issue. I've asked uh, a couple of guys on YouTube. So we've got um, Rob from the Xanadu channel and also Prezo from the Mark Presling channel who are both are you know hobby machinists and they've done quite a bit of brass casting they've got several videos out on that and those guys were really really helpful so you know thank you very much for the information this will be the first time I'm casting brass so it was really good that they you know helped out with the um, information and their experience that they've had with casting brass now the other issue I have is um, I don't have a mill to cut out all of these features that you see in here and uh, but I don't think that's going to be an issue it's just going to be one lump of brass I've got a lathe so I can turn and bore out that and cut the thread in there and I can cut that feature in the lathe as well drill the hole and put a thread in there so you know it might not look the same as that but as long as it does its purpose and works well, um, you know, no one's going to see it. So that's kind of the plan, what we're going to do. Now, the good news is that I have measured the lead screw here um, at various parts along the, the length of it. And, you know, there's, what, a couple of thou difference. So I think that's really good, you know, just shows that there's hardly anywhere on the lead screw and the the nut took all of the um all of the impact well which is good and that's how it's designed to work as well so that's good i don't have to worry about the lead screw i don't have to worry about any low parts because there are none um so pretty much just uh make the block up and put the thread in there and we should be all good to go so like Many of you over the years, you know, you pick up um, bits of brass and stuff and you put it aside in a sort of a scrap container. So yeah, I've got a whole bunch of scrap brass. So I have plenty of brass, I just don't have it in the size that I need. So I'm going to use a bit of this um, square section here. This is 40 millimeters by 40 millimeters. What's that about an inch and a half by an inch and a half? Um, and I'll just weld a, I'll cut a, a piece off. I need it about 65 millimeters long, I think the part. Um, and I'll cut this off and I'll weld a plate on the bottom. And then that will be the mold that I'll use to, um, to do the casting. So I need to make two of these molds, one for the Y axis and one for the X axis.
I'll clean out the inside and hopefully this will stop it sticking uh, when I come to remove the mould. This is half inch thick plate that are scrap that I'm going to use for the bottoms of these moulds. This design will allow me to knock out the brass if it gets stuck. I'm also using scrap pieces here and I'll weld a threaded bung onto these pieces. So I need to drill pilot holes in all four of these pieces of steel. And then we come back and drill 12 millimeter holes on these silver pieces. And we'll drill holes for an M16 thread on these thicker pieces. A bit of cutting oil on there and we'll tap out that M16 thread. So now I'm just doing a test fit to make sure everything all fits together and works okay. And I weld these threaded parts onto these uh, flat pieces of steel. And then we cut off the excess thread that we don't need. This only goes into that half inch plate. And just tidy up the edges around the thread there. And then test the bottom of that plate. And the last part will be to fully weld these bottoms onto these uh, tubes. And there they are, they unscrew like that and I can punch out the casting if it is stuck in there. So the next step is to set up for melting the brass, so I put all the brass into the crucible. We fire up the foundry and put the brass in there and we just let that heat up and melt. And I forgot to turn the camera on record and did the pouring, so that's the end result there. But I did make a mould up for some round stock, and this is what I'm pouring here now. In fact, um, there are two of these that I pour. And there's the second one there. So now it's time to remove them and they did get stuck uh, but just unscrew that bottom plate and then I can knock them out very easily. Looks like the camera's on that shaky tripod again. And here is the second one, unscrew the base and knock it out. That's a really really good design. And this one here I had to actually weld that ring around there so I could put it in the vise. Now this is tapered so once it becomes loose it just falls out. And those are the castings. So the first step is I want to clean up the um, sides of the casting just to get it all flat and smooth so it can be held in the chuck. And then I sort of work out what orientation I need and how it's all going to go. That feature at the bottom there is going to be moved um, to stop it hitting the column. And I don't know what it is about brass, but I had this on the hacksaw for ages and it wasn't cutting very good. So I thought, well, I think I'll deal with it with the grinder and... 30 seconds later, it just chewed it off. Now I use the center drill to, um, and the drill press to get the center, and then I'm using that to you dial in the part. 
and as tradition we just face off the end, sounds like win. And then I make the first feature which is the little locating um, bit at the bottom. And measure that to size, all looks good. Then we need to put a thread in there, so that's a 516 times 18. And I need to drill in 24 millimeters, so I put my stainless steel ruler there and I use the gauge on the tailstock to go into that 24 millimeter. And then we just tappity tap the hole. And a test fit of the bolt that works perfectly. So that feature is all complete. So I needed to find the centre height for the thread. So I made up this little jig and I used a drill bit there and some parallels bolted to the face that I know and that found me the right height. And then I used a ruler just to find the centre of that and gave that a centre punch. And again, I used the centre drill in the drill press to put a centre there so I can dial it in in the lathe. Now I needed to make sure that the part was parallel to the bed, so I'm using the dial gauge there to sweep across on the face that's already been machined, and then we dial it in. Clean the face off again. And it was about at this point that I thought to myself, I only have one chance of doing this. You know, I'm dealing with a left hand trapezoid thread, uh, or I haven't done that before, so I thought, well, I'd better make up maybe a test piece first. So that's what we're doing here, just a bit of steel, doing the final bore out to size. The work is still left in the four jaw, so I'm using the three jaw here. I just took the four jaw off the machine and put the three jaw on. Now I found a tool that looks like it had a very close shape to the thread that we need. And here I am grinding the tool bit to the right shape for the trapezoid thread. And this is a valve facing machine so it has a very fine stone on it. And that's what the shape looks like for the thread. And there it is inside the thread and it looks pretty good there. Now that dark bit that you see just on the right hand side there by the thread, that, I don't know, is just the way the light's shining on it I think. So I start cutting the thread and of course this takes a bit of time to do but we get there in the end. And I test fit the lead screw and that works out perfect so I know that the thread is correct and we can carry on. So just drilling out the centre of the brass here for our thread. The final pass with a boring bar just to get to that dimension that we need and that measures fine so now we move on to the threading part so we start off with a scratch pass and we check the pitch with the gauge and that all looks good so we continue on with the threading and again this takes a few steps to go through to get to the right depth Eventually you get there and I did sneak up on the side slowly so took a cut wound the carriage all the way to the end so I could get the lead screw in and check it and just kept doing that until I had a nice fit and that was a really really good fit. I wanted to test this out before I cut any more features into that part. So I put the table back on. and that works absolutely perfectly nice and smooth so I'm very very happy with that 
So I'll just start cleaning up all the other faces now. I'm not too worried about not being in the center as long as they're flat. We start to cut out the other features now. So this is a little chunk that we chop out of the end here. I have to use the hacksaw in the end just to take that out. And then we drill our hole that we're going to use for our backlash adjustment. And that hole gets tapped out. And then we cut the slit with our angle cutting machine here. Since I don't have a mill to do it. So this is a bit ironic. I don't have a mill and I'm trying to put a cap head screw in here so I need a little pop it. So what I've done is I've ground the end of a drill out and I've just gone in nice and slowly there and that worked out really good. I'm just testing out the backlash adjuster there and that all works really really good so I'm happy with that. Finally I'm just sort of rounding off some of the sharp edges there. I mean this doesn't get seen so now here are the two parts together, as I mentioned had to move this feature closer to the end so that the nut does not hit the column underneath there. And there's another view, the new nut is about 10 millimeters or 38 longer so there's more threads in there which is good. There's the rounded edges and we just had a little bit of area there where the casting sort of shrunk down but that doesn't really affect any of the operations of this nut. That is the nut all pretty much finished and I'll go put it back on the mill. But wait there is more. So this is the x-axis lead screw and as you can see there's a lot of play in there and if I go sort of linear to the thread here it's about a millimeter of slop in there. So although it is working, I think I'm going to actually make a nut for this as well, while I've got the machine down in bits. The process for this nut is exactly the same as the last one, so I won't go and show everything. Although it is a right-handed thread instead of a left-handed thread. Here I am just checking out the fit there again. Here's a couple of photos of these nuts when they're finished, along with the original nuts as well. So they get put all back onto the machine, and I get the machine up and running, and here I am working on the project that I was working on before. So once again, I want to thank Prezo and Rob for their knowledge and advice in brass casting. So if you want to know more about brass casting or casting aluminium, definitely go to these guys' sites and have a look, and I'm sure you'll pick up some good information there. If you like my videos, subscribe and hit the notification um, if you want to get notified when a new video comes out. And once again, I hope everyone has a great day, and thanks for watching.